Welcome to Story Station, episode 39. In this episode, you can listen to one story from New Zealand. This story is titled, Awarua, the Taniwa of Porirua. Awarua shows that, with enough hard work, anything can be accomplished. Hope you enjoy it! I'll read a story called, Awarua. The Taniwa of Porirua. Aorua was a Taniwa who lived in the Porirua harbor many hundreds of years ago. In those times, the surrounding hills were clad with the tallest native trees, and the harbor was much deeper than it is today. Aorua would often venture out into Te Moana o Raukoa, chasing food or visiting friends. But she would always return to the place she regarded as home, the Porirua Harbor. Rere Roa, the albatross, was one of Awarua's closest friends. Rere Roa would often watch for Awarua far below as she flew across Te Moana o Raukawa. She would then descend with outstretched wings and call out with an ab- albatross karanga, to the delight of her friend. Awarua and Ririroa could talk for hours. Awarua loved to hear Ririroa's stories of flying for years across the great oceans without having to return to land, resting and feeding on the surface of the sea. Ririroa would stretch her great wings extending them into the breeze to illustrate how she could be lifted into the wind and taken away. Awarua also had wings, but they were small in comparison to her body and didn't seem to extend well at all. Awarua was embarrassed by her inability to fly when she tried to imitate her friend. It was fortunate that Rere Roa could see her embarrassment and didn't make a big deal out of it. It's not so important to fly, you know. Sometimes I wish that I could just stay in one place and have a home like you do, Rere Roa offered as words of comfort. But Awarua wasn't convinced. You're a good friend, Rere Roa. I wouldn't ask this of you if I didn't think you could do it. Awarua hesitated. But will you teach me how to fly? Rere Roa secretly thought that it would be impossible to teach Awarua to fly, but didn't let on. Instead, she tried to make an excuse. I have to keep feeding and flying to stay alive. I would find it very hard to stay in one place. But Awarua was quick to reply. Of course, you will be fed with the most luscious fist from my larder. You would also be expected to demonstrate the intricacies of flying with precision. Rere Roa could only help, agree to help, and so returned with Arua to begin training. On the first day of flying practice, Arua was nervous, but Rere Roa reminded her that flying took a lot of practice and perhaps quite a lot of time. Firstly, you will have to strengthen your wings. Follow behind and copy my movements, Rere Roa instructed. She slowly flapped her wings, paddling with her feet, circling the whole harbor while Arua followed behind. By the, by the time they had returned to their starting point, Arua was ready to collapse. That was harder than I thought. My small wings feel very weak, she said. Rere Roa re- replied, When the albatross chicks first begin to fly, they are the same. You will need strength in your wings and a focused eye to achieve your goal. Rere Roa re- then dove down to the seafloor and picked up two large stones. She placed one in each of Awarua's wings and told her to hold her wings apart. She instructed Awarua to follow her movements. Rere Roa raised her wings so the tips touched above her head. 
Owlbear tried to follow suit, but it was much harder with weighted wings. After ten such movements, Rayroa let Owlbear rest. This continued all day until she was completely exhausted. When the sun finally set, Aurora took a well-deserved rest. Her thoughts then turned to the evening meal. When Ray Ray Roa saw the array of fish and eels that Aurora had in her larder, she was amazed. There was every type of fish imaginable, and all swimming in her holding pool, ready to be eaten at her whim. Aurora scooped up a wing full of fish and offered them to Rere Roa, and she politely took a few of the choicest fish and suggested that Aurora return the rest. But she was hungry after her day's work and slid all the fish straight into her mouth, swallowing them in one huge gulp. When Aurora le leaned into the pool to grab another wingful, Rere Roa stopped, stepped in to stop her. You are in training now, and will need to strictly watch your diet. I couldn't possibly stay airborne if my body was too heavy, she said. Aurora sadly released the second scoop of fish, but was happy that her teacher was as serious as she was about flying. Aurora's training continued in this way for weeks. Soon, she was racing around the harbor and lifting her weighted wings with ease. Finally, the day arrived when Rere Roa had an announcement to make. You have been a good student and have trained hard thus far. I think you are ready to try your first takeoff, she said. Awaru was overjoyed. Fantastic! I feel like I could fly right now. The next day dawned, fine and calm. Rere Roa took Awaru to the south end of the harbor and started with wing stretches to get the muscles moving. She then directed Awarua towards the center of the harbor, facing Wateria, the local Maonga. Keep your focus. Use all the strength and ability you have trained for, and give it your best go, Ruraroa advised. Awarua took a deep breath, focused towards the north end of the har harbor, and headed off. She gathered speed slowly but surely. Her wings flapped furiously as she picked up the pace. As Awarua began to skim across the water, she raised her head, thrusting all her energy into her wings. When she was nearing the other side of the harbor, Awarua could hear a voice screeching into her ear. Rerero was effortly gliding beside her, encouraging her on. Push down on your wings and fly, she cried. And with that, Awaru gave an extra hard push and lifted from the water. But the Maonga Wateria loomed in front of her quickly. She strained to gain more altitude, but wasn't fast enough to get over the hill. She smashed into the trees that covered Wateria which luckily softened her fall. Awarua emerged from the tangle of broken trees with a huge smile on her face. Did you see? Did you see me fly? She screeched excitedly. Rere Roa landed beside her friend and gave her a huge hug. You were absolutely fantastic. I saw you fly and you will fly again, she said. Awaru was quick to try again. Rere Roa gave her further advice, and they were off once more. This time, Awaru flapped her wings extra hard from the beginning and gathered more speed for her takeoff. She lifted off the water further back than she did the first time and quickly gained at altitude, easily passing over Wateria. Aura was so excited, she was busy howling at the top of her lungs and didn't see Mana Island looming in front of her. She hit the island with a mighty crash, sliding across it as if she were slipping through mud at a low tide. 
she landed in the sea nearby, unhurt, and actually very proud that she had flown that far. Ray Ray Roa laughed with her friend. Awarua had achieved a great feat through sheer determination. Awarua continued to practice her flying. Although she couldn't fly for long distances, she was happy with being able to lift into the skies. Rere Roa departed across the great oceans, also happy that her teaching had been so successful. When Rere Roa returned from her long fishing trips, Awarua would show her the new flying trick she learned, often making some spectacular splashdowns. To this day, the results of Awarua's flying antics can be seen in the landscape around the Porirua Harbor. When she crash-landed across Mana Island, Awarua took the top off of it, causing its flat appearance. When she collided into Witteria, she caused a huge gully, which is where Onepoto Park is now. This is the story of how Awarua, the Taniwa of Porirua, learned how to fly. The End I hope you enjoyed this story. Thank you for listening to Story Station. We are adding stories as frequently as possible, so check back often. We would love to hear your feedback and any questions you may have. Thank you.